we we're going through some tough times just in general as a whole species. <laughs> so in moments where we can take to just breathe and have some fun and just generally be goofy and silly all together, priceless moments. I love Faster Purple, uh, Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill. It is such a fun show. And this episode was very cool because it was not like a table of people that don't play together very often. It very much was a group of people that know how to play together, which felt really, really unique. What inspired that aspect? Because we don't see that a lot in the show. Yeah. um, So the glass cannon are you familiar with that podcast at all and with the with the channel on twitch no i actually just got introduced to it through this and i'm very excited to check more of it out they're they're one of the older older tables meaning they've been around and played together a really 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 long time Mm -hmm. some of the like uh, so troy was the dm and then you had jared logan who's he's actually a stand-up comedian uh and joel bryan those three the three guys they they've played together sit for like years and years and years over time they would just meet certain players in the community and if they met a player that sort of gelled with their philosophy and how they do a lot of comedic because a lot of them come from comedic improv in that in the glass cannon they would just pick us up and we would continue doing things with them over and over again so i did a traveler campaign with them i did a pathfinder campaign uh lord of the rings I played a lot of games with them for the past like five years, like either short campaigns, long campaigns, or even just like one shots and charity games. So when they found out they were going to do a uh, a Festival Purple Worm Kill Kill episode, they were like, you want to jump into it? Because I know they wanted to bring like a, I, I, I tend to be chaotic. They're very chaotic just in general, but um. Yeah, I like I like to uh, one of my things is I don't like breaking games, which is what people can do. It's when a player goes into a game, and does things to completely derail the game selfishly. But I do like to test the DM a little bit and to test the other players, like throw something in that's like, oh, I didn't I didn't really see that coming. So and I like the way that this this table of people specifically flexes to anything you throw out there. And it's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't I- throw them off. Yeah, I loved how you guys bounced off each other because it was very much a, it wasn't just yes and, it was yes and I'm going to make it more silly and a little bit harder for you, which was so much fun. <laughs> so much. I love d and um, like I've, I've gotten to play in some campaigns that are really like, you know, really serious and they, um, they're they uh, uh, like heart-wrenching and emotional scenes I've gotten to do like improvisationally in uh, in campaigns and games, but this table specifically is chaos and fun. So whenever I'm, I get the opportunity to play with them, I know that it's going to be like, I know what she did and I'll just come up with a <laughs> And they're like, oh, really? Well, guess what I did? And I love, I just love that. It's like freeing for my spirit and my soul. <laughs> Oh God. One of my questions though, because you talked about you've done one shots and you've played a lot of different tables. How do you approach it differently when you know the game is going to last for one hour and end in a TPK? I've only played a couple of campaigns where we know the characters are going to die. So we're like, I mean, because you do, you put a lot of like time and energy into creating your character. I'm like, is it going to die? Wait a second. But this, yeah, we knew this was all about like the careening uh, sort of toward this untimely end. Um, in general, when you when you know you're replaying a game that has like ten episodes or more, mm-hmm. you create like this entire story arc for your character to make it fun to play the character, but make it also if the show is a stream show for people who are watching, yeah, to see like this either funny or serious like evolution of the character to make it even more fun for yourself because you're telling a story. When you're doing a one shot, it is one hour and you have a whole table of people who are also doing the same thing. So it becomes way less about a story um, arc that you're trying to build on and more about displaying a personality. Yeah. So like I remember I played a game once where it was, and it was actually over Halloween. So it was really fun. And we all had to play critters of some sort. And I lost a bet. So... <laughs> I ended up having to play a spider and I really, 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 really hate spiders, but it ended up being the most, one of the most fun things I've ever done because I made her like this sort of whiny 
like little tiny spider with like fuzzy arms and she keeps getting caught in her own porn web and she's crying her way through the game. <laughs> Everyone was laughing at her. And I was like, oh, this is why I do this. This is fun. So it becomes more about just like developing a personality that you get to play for that one hour. And maybe you have you have the backstory, like where she comes from or where he comes from, what they or what they do or where they're from um, to help you play their personality believably. And it just I mean, because really it's, it's a game. So you're trying to make it fun for yourself and for the other players at the table. Speaking of your character, I thought it was very cool that you had a half orc that was not half human, but half water elemental. What inspired that idea? My very first D&D character ever in this world was a half orc because I was like, I mean, I, I'm like, I, I want to be the, the biggest and the tallest. Come on. I want to be the barbarian. I want to be the paladin. I want to be the one that's running in. We fight! That's my personality, gaming personality. Usually I'm the tank. So I was like, for this game, because it's because it's such a, I mean, for such a big deal for me getting to play with this table in person, I rarely get to play with them in person. And because I love the idea that the Matthew Lillard put together for this series of shows, I think it's so, so freaking cool. I wanted to go right back to my half orc origins, but I was like, well, what can I do to make it like a twist? I'm going to make a twist. A uh, half elf. Well, much of pointier ears, much of bigger. But I was like, what if I make it something really ridiculous? I was like, with the perfect table for it. And it also gave me an opportunity to make her blue. Like just comically, she, oh, because she's half water elemental, she has to be like bright blue. And the rest of her clan or her people are all normal different shades of green because they're all half orcs or they're, they're all orcs and half orcs in her, um, in her village, but she's the only big blue half orc and no one knows why. And then she, even her little brothers are normal shades of green, her mother, her father, her mother finally tells her as she gets older that, you know, you're not a Loki. You're, I mean, you're not, I mean, their, their last name is all Finn. I don't know if I got to say that in the show, but yeah. But she became a Loki Triton when she found out like who her father was. Her father was literally the son of Poseidon, you know? <laughs> so she has like some godlike powers in her. So that's how I was able to describe those. Yeah. yeah. It was just, I just thought it was something interesting to throw in there. I it was that. very fun. It was very fun. I liked it. I now want more like creative takes on half orcs. Like that very much was something that I got excited about and want to see more of. Yeah. I, you know, I was like, I was like, oh, and so of course, like when I was trying to like figure out the artwork for her, I was like, now I have the cosplay. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm gonna have the cosplay because she has like this, like because her skin is like Caribbean blue, and then her hair has like a blue tinge to it. And she, her, basically, in the story, little one one page I wrote for myself, her skin started changing color as she was growing up, and her her family was sort of like. And her mother was like, oh, you know, I have, you know, interesting, it's still green, it's just greenish blue, you know? And her mother was like, well, and then she had to, you know, the, the, her, her husband, Loki's father knows the story. Like she knew, but she thought maybe, you know, she didn't think that her daughter would come out blue like her father. And that's why she, and then when her daughter had, had a really easy time swimming and she was really just, she had this affinity for water and she could hold her breath a long time and it, and it got better and better as she got older. That's when her mother had to sit her down and say, okay, <laughs> there's a reason why you can breathe underwater. I really hope I get to play her somewhere again. Mm. Yeah, I definitely want to see that. And then can you talk to me a little bit about not only playing in front of a live audience, but the audience participation element, because they got to make decisions that impacted the game. Yeah. So I, 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 I've only DM'd once before. It's a terrifying experience if you're doing it live. And have you ever DM'd before? Do you, do I have not. I oh. sure I will in the future, but I have not yet. If you're doing it live, you have time considerations to think about. So it becomes a terrifying thing because the the cast will run off into like the chat. Oh, we're gonna, and you're like, no, get back here. <laughs> um. So. Um. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I was uh, sort of like trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to to do for for this without letting it like run off into into the into the shadows. So I try not to like like go off into like the stratosphere or whatever. But I do like when the audience gets to jump in and throw in twists and things because then it tests us to come up with like like just on the fly situations that are like really interesting. With this one, I've gotten to play in front of an audience twice before. 
but the audience was not able to participate. I played live streams where the audience was allowed to either bid or give like charity, uh, uh, charity donations in order to influence the game. And I've had those before, but I've never had the combination of one being in person and two also the audience getting to say what happens. So you really just have to be like super flexible. Mm-hmm. You have to be really, really flexible and you have to be, I mean, I don't know, get up in the morning, drink some campaign, um, caffeine so that you, you can, like I said, flex, like just bend right into whatever they say, because you never, it was not planned what the audience was going to, was going to give us. So we went into that sitting down at the table, like we're backstage, like right before we go on. And we're all like, I'm like, what do you think's going to, what do you think they're going to do? What do you think they're going to tell us in there? And John, we're standing there and he was like this. <laughs> and I was like, ah. so, so, you know, we run out there looking all confident and but backstage, we were sort of like, okay, you know, everyone got their head together. Everyone got their game face on. You guys ready to go? And you go in and you're just like, you have to be ready for it. And you know who's really good at that, in my opinion? I mean, everyone's good at it. I think Jared, Jared just, man, he has, I feel like he has a Rolodex of like just fun in his head that I would love to like peer into every now and again, because that the la- at the very end of it, you guys will see it. Um, it just, it, everything just blew me away at the end. <laughs> The ending, we all, everyone always dies in the show. What the heck? (laughs) My God. What do you want to take from this experience into uh, future projects? You know what I liked about this series? Um, Number one, that it was, I mean, I love, I will always and forever love the the chaos that, that goes into these series. So I will, I will say I'm, I like the idea that, that I got to just sort of come up with the most random things ever and not, and to not be afraid whatsoever to bring that to the table and to trust that when I'm playing with a group of people that are my friends or in a professional campaign that they're that they're going to be ready for anything. And in fact, if people are watching, I think they they want to see more of that. People want to see when something ridiculous happens and to see how the cast comes together to sort of figure it out. Not to like just overthink yourself, overthink yourself. You know, you come to the table prepared like everybody else, but to just be willing to say, you know what, is that a monster? I'm going to try to stand on top of that monster and I'm going to surf the monster down the hill. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And it's going to make total sense. You can see it in your head, right? (laughs) Tables like this. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But hey, if he dies, I mean... I once in a campaign killed a monster with a shoe. So, oh, it was a magical shoe though. It had magical property. That helps. <laughs> so yeah, it's just being just being very open to everything. And yes, the yes and, but also just playing with playing with what everyone else throws in. It's really fun when I have an idea and I see another player at the table sort of jump onto that idea and twist it and do something. And then if everyone does that, that's when you have the best experience, you know? Yeah. I mean, I I hope we get to do more of these. I mean, I I loved the series. Matthew Lillard did a really good job, like putting together, uh, putting the tables together and um, just allowing everyone to kind of go with whatever, go with whatever they wanted. Like it wasn't like he policed anybody. He literally just said, Here's your table. Have fun. And nobody like over prepared either, which is interesting. Everybody just said, trust the process. There's a moment in the episode that I thought was very interesting because you guys were not able to like fully kind of flesh out your characters, but you had to think about what your character's greatest fear was. Was that something that you like had to think about in the moment or had you kind of been contemplating that beforehand? In the moment. Oh my God. <laughs> Everything was in the moment. Every, I mean, when you play a D&T game, ev- everything happens right there, but it's very different when you're in person with your friends, sitting at home in your pajamas, eating pizza. And when you're doing a live show, which it's the game, but it also is something people are watching. So you, there are things that have to be paced and you have to have ideas, but you know, Troy, Troy, the DM is known for that. He's known for giving you a flat idea. And then while he's jamming, he's like, you know what? This table is having a little bit too much of an easy time with this. 
So give us a full soliloquy of why this happened. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to say this and hope nobody laughs at me and thinks of uh yeah, I'm like I said, I'm I'm definitely um definitely ADHD. And in this game, this particular game series game style is perfect for me because everybody in the game is like, yes, yeah, so am I. I love that this comes from the idea of he thought it was too easy as you guys were barreling towards your death. He's like this. You know what? And you can always tell and he gets that look in his eye. I'm like, oh, Troy's about to do something great. And I love being able, you know what I love? Being able to like try to use like fantasy accents. So you have an idea of an accent in your head, but you'll take it and you're like, what if I add a little bit of this to it and try to make it sound very interesting? Like, what the heck is that? But you know what? For some reason it works for this. So we're just going to let it go. It worked. (laughs) Oh gosh. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention about this particular table. Oh, other than the fact that I, 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 like I said, I've played with many, many tables over the past like five, six, seven years. Um, but this table specifically comes in with um, comedic improv. I know I have a comedic improv background. I know Troy does. I know Joe does. I know Jared's a stand-up comedy. I think she, she I think she, she think, I think she does as well. So I, I know coming in that something bizarre is going to happen and we're going to have to either straight man it or lean into the comedy. And I tend to be a very straight man when it comes to like comedic pieces. I'll throw in something that, you know, that I, I did not originally intended for the character. And I was like, ew, why did I say that? Oh, well, it was like, yeah, that's cool. And I know Jared's going to say so. <laughs> you know what I loved also? So this so this play, these series of games had the narrator type, but he ended up being a character. Like, so he jumped in. Um, I thought that was really interesting, especially for like a live show. And it sort of gives the audience someone to play off of. That that's that's something that that never happens, you know. So this was that was something that was new that was added to sort of tie the each episode sort of together, and it helped with the pacing too. But I did not, I was not aware that that was going to be a thing until we got there. And then I would love to do, Caitlin, I would love a, um, I like the live show element. I love the audience getting to influence it. That to me is genius. But everyone's dressed up in character and you're moving around the set. So it's like a live action. So it's like LARP, but like live action D&D. That'd be a really cool thing. That'd be very mm. cool. I definitely want to check that out. I think you should do that. Yeah, I'm like, what the heck? I have all these costumes, plenty of swords. I have a great axe. I have a hammer. <laughs> I, feel like, I, I feel like you're set. I think you just got to get the table together and like set that up and let me know when you do because I for sure want to check that out. Uh, I know, right? I'm like, I have enough blue body paint, don't I? I have some grease paint back there in my bathroom, but let's go. That would be so much fun. I mean, D&D over the past is just, it's funny how in general it has just gotten so big. I mean, it was big before, but it was more like underground big. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just became like, there's a D&D movie? What? Wait a minute. There's like, there's like different celebrities are wanting to learn how to play. So I have a lot of friends that are, that are actors. Mm-hmm. A lot of, I mean, we live in LA. You're going to meet people at the gym, whatever. It's a lot of friends who, who are actors and they're all like, you have to teach us how to play. And I'm like, Really? I get to do Okay, so the next time we get together, I'm going to like DM for you guys. I'm going to be level three. And I'm like, <laughs> it'd be fun, right? I now want to be at your table. <laughs> really? Yes, 100%. Okay, we'll ex- we will exchange information because 2024, I've deemed as my year of doing more jamming. Because like I said, I've only gotten to do it once before. Yeah. And that was like, it was like a two shot for, I, um, for a, a channel called Hyper Up G. And we we had like, we had the, the be- I had the best time. And I was like, I get to feel like a puppeteer. But <laughs> the stress is when you're playing live and you have time constraints. So when you, you you know, you have to kind of corral everybody. That's not, that's not where I need you to go. Get back here. But that's real life. People don't do what you expect them to do ever. But the funniest thing, I will say this, will say this, is players never do anything you think they're going to do. Mm-hmm. So you could have in your head. I remember I had like in my head a puzzle. Like they might do this, 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 or this. They literally did the something I never thought about before. Yeah. So 
even if you're like, you know, the DM player, you have people, then you just flex. Make it fun. Make it fun. Make it fun. I love it. And I'm going to ask you one more question. What was your thought when you found out the big bad was the elder brain? Were you like, oh, no, there's no chance. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was actually mad at myself. I was like, why didn't I see that coming? Where have I been? Where was my head that I did not see this? I do spend some time I'm going, there's something there. If I can just read into their mind. I, yeah, I, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite angry with myself, but I, I like, I appreciate the twist. I appreciate the twist. Yeah. Keep me on my toes. Why not? I've only, I mean, I've gotten killed in a game before and that was because I was tripping off and being ridiculous. And the dam was like, oh, really? Well, there's an arrow and now you're stabbed to a tree. Where's your, how many hit points do you have? I was like 11. And he's like, they're gone. You better hope you have a cleric on this. <laughs> so with this one, I was like, well, I guess, uh, I guess I'm going down, but I'm going down in a blaze of fireworks. Yes. I think you had the most epic death of the group. Oh my gosh, he did that on purpose. <laughs> I also loved at the end when you're like, my character realizes she hates fish, so she oh. should not have come on this journey. <laughs> it's like, what? What the heck just happened? Never make assumptions in this game. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, God, that was fun. Oh, I, I, I'm excited to find out that the show premiered. I wasn't really sure when it was going to. So the, when I found out that it was, I got, I got really, I got really, really happy. This was, this was, this was exciting. I was, it was for, it was exciting for like for the community. Um, the game itself, you know, being able to see it grow to where, to where it is now. And that um, people are understanding how, Im how important just to people that creativity fun escapism is like you can be an adult and it's okay to want to do something that's fun and silly and it's not oh you're not growing up it's, we we we're going through some tough times just in general as a whole species <laughs> so in moments where we can take to just breathe and have some fun and just generally be goofy and silly all together priceless moments. I completely agree. I feel like adults are too stuck in not tapping into their imagination. And one of the things I love about D and D is it forces you to. That's right. And it's okay. And the fact that more adults are the ones that have been playing, but secretly for like years, they come out that they've been playing for years. When I, when I find out some of these things, I'm like, we're coming out with like our, the reality or what's up. Like we're all just yeah, it's like I'm I'm now announcing to my friends that I'm a massive nerd. They're like, we knew when you had the storm, uh, when you when you had the Marvel Bolero on like eight years ago, we knew. <laughs> you know. So and it that has been like one of the best parts of the D D evolution is um seeing how many people want to play and are and uh want to be a part of the community and have fun and just like be creative and tell stories and just be safe and confident. And no one is laughing at you. No one hates your character. They just want to, they hope you like their character. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Like I said, this episode is so much fun. And yeah, I for sure want to play at your table now because I love how you're like your approach to D&D, &D, your appreciation for D&D, &D, all of it. So I for sure am in. Okay, good. I'm glad we have each other's information because I'm going to bother you. I'm going to bother you. Next year. <laughs> I I will be disappointed if you don't. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Now that I know this, all right, that's good. I'm mentally building the table. So and what I will not, I promise I will not, I will not do anything weird or uh kill anyone. I promise. <laughs> oh my god. You're like, welcome <laughs> to the phone game of faster purple worm. You'll be dead in an hour. <laughs> there might be one under that. That's such a good idea to create a, a game that's sort of set with like a movie background. So like people know the movie, but then you take it and you're like, that's what you think I'm going to do. It's not what's going to happen, though. It's a good I idea, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that you have the D&D &D, uh, blanket on your chair because I have that on my couch. Oh, yeah. You have one on your couch? Yeah, I was at the premiere. I was like front center. Everyone so put it on. I'm like, oh, I have a signage pretty much like everywhere I ever run D and D. Like I have an entire shelf in my. I think most people do have all the books, mm -hmm. the hard cover, the hard copy books. Just to have every game I play, I'll make sure I have the hard copy. So for like 32 different RPGs over there, I like stories. I like writing. I love character development. That's yeah. a lot of fun and. 
I take it, I mean, like most people who play this game a lot, we take it really seriously. Yeah, as you should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put a lot into it, man. You're like, you know what would make her really cool? I was like, imagine if you could have a great ax that every time you look at it, like I have a, one character that is a, a lawyer in one game, and but her goal in life was to be like a, a judge. Like she wants to have a seat in, the, in her because she comes from it's that starts in like a human like Earth, like a human community or sort of, like normal humans. So she um she wants to be in, she wants to be a judge. She wants to have a gavel. She wants to get there. So she works really hard, and she's about to be the youngest appointed judge when she gets catapulted into this fantasy land. So she has, so as she gets, yeah, so she'd be, oh, she has this little axe and it comes this great axe, but there are certain times when that great axe looks like a giant gavel. So yeah. she gets to be like, objection! Would you kill you? Oh, Imagination. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank I do expect you. to hear from you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. 